An Aldi outdoor solar security light. This is one of these lights that mounts on the wall or a fence and it's got the solar panel, it's got a lithium battery in it, hopefully down here to keep it away from the heat, but I'm not counting on that. And aside from the fact it's got the passive infrared detector, it's got the LEDs in the base that project light down onto the ground, but it also has a couple of warm white LEDs at the back that just glow gently and project a bit of light against the wall. I've not seen this working yet because I've just taken out the packet. I'd just like to also apologise for the state of my hands. They may be looking a bit rough at the moment. I've had a little, yeah, it's kind of rare it happens, but occasionally get a little outbreak of what's called dyshydrotic eczema and, uh, or eczema, and uh, it just makes my hands look a bit rough. But uh, that will pass over time. Hopefully, the sooner the better. So, things to note about this, the little on button is actually, it's not a click on, click off. It's actually a momentary action one. So, that suggests... Uh, maybe a dedicated control circuit. There's a very misplaced sticker for the power indicator. And, well, let's just open it. That's the best thing, isn't it? So there are six screws, two at the top here and two at the bottom. The eczema I've got is one called dyshydrotic. It's a long time since I've had it. And then it's just flared up again. Don't know why. No, don't know what the trigger is. Hot weather is a significant factor in it. Uh, some of you may have this and not even know what it is. Uh, if you ever get little tiny water blisters that appear between your fingers, then uh, that and that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a very annoying thing. Uh, there's no known cause for it. There's no known cure for it. Uh, there's a theory that it might be caused by sort of a hay fever effect. The lithium battery is... In a holder at the bottom of the light, and it is indeed well away from the sunlight. It's at the bottom of the light as opposed to at the top. The circuit board here has what looks like a charge control chip in it for the. I'll bring it up so I'll get a closer look at this so we can see it better. I'm not sure how far I'll be able to take it into it because uh, I have work to go to shortly. Time is uh, time is tight at the moment. There's another screw. I should take that one out before forcing it out, shouldn't I? Okay. So on one side we've got the moment traction click button. On the other side, I've also got the passive infrared detector, and. Then it's all down to a little 8-pin chip, but it's not going to be the standard 8-pin microcontroller. It's going to be a fairly dedicated chip, probably for this task, uh, to control the uh, password and thread and also handle this little uh, click on and off switch. So I'm just going to pause momentarily while I take a look at this. Well, that didn't take long. Talk about move along, there's nothing to see here. It's all being done by this chip, which is rather predictably anonymous, it's just a dedicated chip to the task. So looking at the lithium battery first, we've got the negative connection of the lithium battery comes over to this pad, it's the white wire here, and it goes to the charge control chip, little six pin chip, very common, probably TP4056-ish type thing. Um, the negative from the uh, that, no, that was a negative. The positive uh, from the lithium cell comes up the blue wire, rather oddly, to this common bus bar, this common positive rail. The solar panel, the negative uh, is going to the to charge, well, it's coming to the negative rail here, but it's also going to the uh, charge control chip there. And the for the input from the solar panel, there's no sort of, I suppose there is current regulation via this, but the positive comes when this red wire here and it goes through this diode to charge the circuitry. So it's effectively going to the positive rail up here, which is not really surprising. There's a sense resistor, well, one of two sense resistors. It's forming a small resistive bridge that goes to an input in the chip so the chip can sense the light level by detecting the voltage from the solar panel. The passive infrared sensor here has just a couple of components. Is that a resistor and capacitor? Uh, just decoupling, I guess, um, and going straight to an input. That is the simplest circuitry I've, I've ever seen. There's what appears to be a voltage regulator here with a capacitor on each side, and that is measuring about, about 2.8 volts across this. So I'm guessing it is a 2.8 voltage regulator 
to keep uh, a stable voltage for this circuit to operate at so it isn't affected by fluctuations during sort of switching or uh, of the actual LEDs or other external influences. And that also means that the lithium cell just off to the side here, uh, the 2.8 volts that lets it use the maximum capacity from that cell, although I'd say the LEDs would start probably getting a wee bit dimmer at that sort of voltage as well. There are two transistors. One controls the little tiny strip, that's the wires going out uh, here. So this blue wire here is going to the little tiny strip of uh, the warm white LEDs that just glow when it detects dusk. And the other transistor here through this higher value, well this lower value resistor but higher power resistor is going through this blue wire to light the LEDs, the main sort of LED illumination panel. So there's really not an awful lot to see. So it's an interesting light, it's just absolutely optimised for mass production. So winning details about this Aldi light are the proper 18650 that you can actually swap, which is great. I should actually zoom out a bit so you can actually see that. I've just got this perched in a box at the moment. So it's got the proper 18650 here that can uh, be swapped. And the solar panel that you can just see the wires going down to here is a proper uh, one with silicon strips mounted on a fiberglass substrate, which means it's going to be much more resilient to uh, thermal expansion contraction than the ones that are just potted in resin. So it's, uh, it looks very good, actually. It looks quite a nice design, but that's purely because it has all been optimised down to the minimum component count with this specialist little chip here. I'm not sure that is. Is it going to be a microcontroller, or does it have dedicated, a super high sensitivity input that detects uh, the tiny signals that you get out from these passive infrared modules. It could well be just a, a well-optimized little 8-pin microcontroller. Um, but very neat. I quite like that just because of its simplicity. It's quite a nice light.